<laughs> I got caught out there, didn't I? I got caught out. <laughs> Hello, welcome to FMR on this absolutely beautiful day. I'm climbing up the first hill of my uh, run today. Uh, you know the score, we're on episode 6 of the Lakeland 100 training series and as always we're going to start by going through the week's training from last week and then we're going to talk about GPS watches and why GPS is not the correct term anymore. And just before we start, if you do find the video interesting please do give it a thumbs up and if you're new here please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, we do have memberships now, so you can join FMR as a member for as little as one pound a month. When you join as a member, you will get early access to some videos. So some of the videos I release, I'll release them early for members only. And then other videos will be exclusively for members. So you won't see, if you're, if you're just a subscriber, there are some videos you won't ever see on this channel because they are member only videos. As you all know, or you should do by now if you watch the channel, I am a treadmill runner for a lot of the time. I run on Zwift. If you want to go and see my live Zwift running, uh, you need to go and subscribe to the Zwift Run channel or go and check out the Zwift Run channel. Suffice to say, Monday, 10K on the treadmill. So uh, Tuesday, uh, another Zwift run in the morning. I do uh, 4.2 kilometers with my treadmill set at 12%. So we did that on Tuesday morning and then Tuesday evening, I went out with my running club, my local running club, Worthing Harriers. The problem with going out with your running club, much as I love them, is that every run turns into like a tempo effort and then a race at the end which is not what you want when you train. Well, sometimes it's, it might be what you want, but most of my runs are uh, easy paced, low heart rate. And uh, I don't often want to get into a uh, tempo based effort, but uh, it is nice to go out with the club and it's a social thing, isn't it? So that was a 12K run. So it was a total of around 16 kilometers for Tuesday. Wednesday was a 5K run at lunchtime on Zwift. And then in the evening, I represented my club in the Trundle View five miler. That was my hard effort run for the week. Zone five, much of the way through the woods near Goodwood Racecourse. Thursday was a double Zwift day, so a four kilometer climb on hills in the morning and then in the evening, a nice easy uh, 6K at low heart rate. 22K on Friday, and then on Saturday, we were in the beautiful but very flat county of Suffolk, uh, where Victoria was going to run the Suffolk Backyard Ultra. If you don't know what a Backyard Ultra is, then you need to watch my award-winning film uh, called 81 Yards. It's available to purchase on Vimeo and it's about the world record that was broken for the Backyard Ultra at Suffolk uh, last year. Suffice to say, Victoria did amazingly well in her very first Backyard Ultra. She covered 66 miles, um, and I ran the loop a couple of times of the course. So uh, on Saturday, I did two loops, which constitutes about eight miles. But then I had a small problem on the Sunday. See, on the Saturday night, I must have lent on something on my left side and it's irritated my sciatic nerve and caused terrible pain in my hip. So much so that I, I could hardly walk when I woke up on Sunday morning. I took a load of painkillers, I managed to do one loop, but in order to get my 100k for the week, I needed to do two loops and I, I just couldn't manage it. I could not get out to do another loop. My leg was so sore. I just had to give up. So mileage for this week, total mileage for this week, 94 kilometers. So even worse than last week. That's about 29, 30 kilometers on the treadmill. And it would have been about 70K outdoors, but ended up being 64, 65 kilometers outdoors. In terms of heart rate zones, I haven't done the full maths yet. Uh, I'll do it later and I'll put it on the screen now for you. I'm guessing 
five miles of zone four and five and the rest in zones one and two or a little bit in zone three. So approximately 10% in zones four and five and 80% in zones one and two and a little bit extra in zone three. Something like that is my guess. This week, Garmin announced the new 255 and the 955 Forerunner watches. Uh, these replace, of course, the very popular 245 and the 945 watches. So if you are looking to buy a running watch, your main three companies are the big daddy Garmin, uh, the relative new kid on the block Coros, which is making big strides, and you've got Suntour, which has always been a kind of rival to Garmin. is a running watch a basic running watch basic functions honestly if you've got an Apple watch just use that it's fine or even your phone will do a passable job these days um, but you can look at something like the Forerunner 55 or the Coros Pace 2 which are great functional watches honestly they'll do anything they'll do almost anything that you need uh, for a basic running watch if you're going to do triathlons, if you're looking at uh, long distance races, ultras, uh, off-road, off trail running, then you might want to look at something a little bit more advanced, something that has maps and navigation built in, uh, something which uses satellites in a slightly different way, which I'm going to explain in a second. Uh, so you would look at something like the 255 or then up to the 945, the 955 as it is now. And then right at the top end, you've got your adventure watches, uh, your multi-sport, um, long distance watches, things like the Phoenix range, we're now up to the Phoenix 7 watches, and the Epix Gen 2 watch, which is the one I use. Uh, you might want to look at those, which have incredibly long battery life as well. That's the other main thing with watches. You want good battery life if you're going to be running anything more than four or five hours at a time. So as well as battery life, one of the main things people want from their running watch is accuracy, speed and distance accuracy. They want to know how far they've run and how fast they've done it. And you get that from satellites. Uh, now, we've always called them GPS watches and GPS is Global Positioning System and it's an American system. It's actually a brand. Uh, but there are other satellite arrays in the sky and notably the European one, Galileo, um, and there's the Russian one, GLONASS. So we've been combining the data from all of those satellite systems into one uh, much better, much more accurate uh, track for our run. But it gets more exciting and even more accurate as of these latest running watches coming out. The 255, the 955, the Epix here, the Phoenix range, the Phoenix 7 range, um, all have multi-band satellite technology. Uh, so this means they are accessing all the different arrays in the sky from the different companies, but they're also accessing them in, on two different frequencies. L1 and L5 are the different frequencies that they're using, which um, without getting into too much technical detail, partly because I don't understand the technical detail, we are just getting much, much more accurate GPS. It's still not going to be perfect. If you run around a city or in a very heavily wooded area, you may still find uh, the track uh, flies off a little bit, but it is, it is so much better than it used to be even just a couple of years ago. So although the term GPS watch will probably be around for ages yet, it's so ubiquitous, isn't it? Really, we should be calling them GNSS watches. And that is it from me. Do let me know down in the comments, how is your training going? What are you currently training for? And also, what GPS... <laughs> I got caught out there, didn't I? I got caught out... <laughs> what GNS... What? No. What GNSS watch do you use? <laughs> what global navigation satellite system... This is why it's called GPS, isn't it? What GPS watch do you use? Uh, what watch have you got? Are you thinking of upgrading? Uh, does accuracy with speed and distance make a difference to you or just do you, do you get out and run and not worry about it too much? Also, if you're new here, do consider subscribing. 
It's been an absolute pleasure uh, so far doing this series for you and I'm going to really enjoy as we ramp up one more week of 100k and then we will start ramping it up towards Lakeland 100. We'll add 10 kilometers every week to the distance until we get up to 100 miles two weeks before Lakeland 100. So take care everyone, see you next time, bye bye.